so my name is Daniel Guinesman. I'm a genitourinary medical oncologist at Fox Chase Cancer Center in Philadelphia. And today discuss two trials in kidney cancer. Uh, one, a trial of citravatinib, a new tyrosine kinase inhibitor with nivolumab. And then another trial of a HIF2 alpha inhibitor called MK6482. So briefly, to summarize, uh, citravatinib seems to modulate the tumor microenvironment, and the idea is can you sensitize the cancer to be more responsive to immunotherapy by combining it with citravatinib. And the data that was presented uh, was in the primarily second-line space, so most of these patients had prior VEGF inhibitors, uh, but usually not more than one. And the data shows that the response rate was quite good, 39%. The disease control rate uh, was really good. It was close to 90%. And a lot of the patients uh, remained on the trial for over a year. Uh, because this is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, there are a lot of typical side effects that we expect with that drug, including nausea, hand-foot syndrome, diarrhea. Uh, there was a high rate of uh, grade 3 or higher adverse events, but not higher than you typically expect for a kidney cancer trial. And importantly, only 10% of people discontinue the drugs due to treatment emergent adverse events. So that's, again, that's in line with other drugs. The really big question is, does this move the needle forward? And if you actually compare this combination to other IOTKI combinations in the second or third line, it really seems to be in line. It doesn't seem to be much different. And in fact, the combination of lenvatin and pembrolizumab, although the sample size was also small in the mid-30s, seemed to be doing better and be given in patients who've already had prior immunotherapy. So I think there's really more development to uh, happen with this combination. Uh, it is moving forward in a phase three trial in lung cancer. There's some promising data in bladder cancer. I don't think we're quite there yet in kidney cancer, but the investigators are gonna keep exploring this. They are gonna look in front line with uh, immunotherapy, and uh, I think we just have to keep watching. Uh, I think the second and more kind of ready for prime time drug is the HIF2 alpha inhibitor from Merck, MK6482. It was originally developed by UT Southwestern and then Peloton, and now Merck uh, has it. And this was a phase two trial of 55 patients, heavily pre treated patients. They've had prior VEGF therapies, prior checkpoint inhibitors, and they had a response rate of around 22% with this drug, disease control rate of around 60%, and many patients on trial and remaining on trial for over a year. So in the kind of what we call nth line space, third, fourth line space, this is really impressive results. Uh, and in addition to that, the side effects are actually quite manageable. You don't see the same side effects like you do with tyrosine kinase inhibitors. You don't have the kind of hypertension, hand foot syndrome, diarrhea, mouth sores uh, that you see uh, with those drugs. Uh, you do see two important things you have to be aware of. One is anemia, and that's because EPO is decreased by this drug, and so you have to supplement with epigen. And the second is hypoxia. That's probably the most important one to watch out for. Um, the mechanism of action is not exactly clear, but we do see this as a probably a change in the ventilatory response, ventilatory hypoxic response. And so if that happens, you have to certainly stop the drug. You have to give supplemental oxygen. You really have to rethink what you're doing for that patient. Those are the two main side effects, but luckily it does not happen that often. Uh, and so there's a phase three trial that is now open comparing MK6482 to Everolimus. It's a phase three trial, um, and there was quite a bit of discussion about uh, what the right uh, comparator is and whether Everolimus is that comparator and how do we get this drug quicker to the patients uh, because it is a novel first-in-class uh, drug. And those were, I think, the two sort of oral abstracts that we highlighted.